Okay, let's move on here and talk about the seven heads. Revelation 17, 9 to 11. This calls for a mind of wisdom. The seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits. They are also seven kings. Five have fallen. One is. The other has not yet come. But when he does come, he must remain for only a little while. The beast who once was and now is not is an eighth king. He belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction. There are two meanings for the seven heads here. The prostitute is sitting on seven hills. Seven hills are also uh, se seven kingdoms. The word kings can also mean kingdoms. So we can take them synonymously. The seven kingdoms uh, talked about here would be Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, and then the final uh, part of Rome, uh, so Rome 2. Uh, so that's seven. Uh, Rome being Rome 1 and Rome 2 uh, never really disappears, but yet it doesn't really continue either. It's kind of a weird kingdom. At that time, he says, the, the angel says, five have fallen. Five of these kingdoms have fallen, or five of these kings have fallen. And that would be Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, and Greece. They had fallen at that time. One is, that would be the Roman Empire, was at that time. The other has not yet come. That would be the second Roman Empire has not yet come. The, the, the kingdom that the beast will finally uh, control. And then there's the beast who arrives, who is the eighth king. The seventh is to come. It's only going to be there for a while, three and a half years. But then the eighth shows up, which is the Antichrist himself, who takes over that, that kingdom and becomes a kingdom of his own. Although he is not a separate kingdom, but he is the eighth. Uh, Revelation 17, 12 to 14. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received the kingdom, but who for one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast. They have one purpose and will give their power and authority to the beast. They will wage war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will triumph over them because He is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and with Him will be His called, chosen, and faithful followers. The last beast that comes up, the last kingdom of the Antichrist, will have ten horns, and they will be given all power, and they will give over this power to the Antichrist himself. Three of them obviously won't want to do this, and he's going to overthrow them. The rest will willingly do that. They, they will go along with the beast. And this is the kingdom that the, the beast takes over, the Antichrist takes over completely, and he becomes the, the single ruler of this, the, these ten horns. These kings have not yet received the kingdom, so I don't think we should expect them to be here right away. These kingdoms are going to be set up for the one hour, for the three and a half years at the end there, for that period of time. And we can expect that to happen fairly quickly, although we'll see signs of it happening, uh, throughout the ages, we'll get closer and closer to this one government and one religion. We'll, we'll, we'll see the whole world moving towards that direction. But this final ten horns, I think, will, will come up pretty fast right before this time because they're given authority uh, by God at that point, and they won't have authority for long, only three and a half years. So they'll come up really fast, and so there's very little point in, in, in trying to figure out who they are at this, at this time in history. The prostitute who has a huge part to play with the, the politics in the end and actually rides this government that comes at the end with the ten kings, uh, she, she, is, she is hugely influential at that time. She is influential and the ten kings accept her but they, they hate her all, all at the same time and, and in the end after they use her they throw her off and they burn her, it says in Revelation 17, 16 and 17. The beast and the ten horns you saw will hate the prostitute. They will bring her to ruin and leave her naked. They will eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to accomplish his purpose by agreeing to hand over the beast their royal authority until God's words are fulfilled. So it, it seems by this statement that the prostitute is, is playing a part in bringing these ten kings into power. But then when these ten kings hand over the power to the Antichrist, the prostitute is destroyed. And again, let's state it very clearly, the prostitute is not the beast. Uh, and, and once we, we identify who the prostitute is, is we can we can scratch her off the list of of people that could possibly be the the final antichrist 
Uh, they, the final Antichrist will not come from the prostitute and actually will be one of the main reasons the prostitute is, is burnt up with fire in the end. This, this beast will actually hate that prostitute. All right, we're, we're getting near the end and then we're, go we're gonna move back into the description of the prostitute and try to figure out who she is. Revelation 17, 18. The woman you saw is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. This is the final verse of Revelation 17 and it tells us that this woman, this prostitute is actually a city. You will remember that in Revelation 17, 9, there's two identities of the seven heads. There's seven kingdoms and there's also seven hills. Uh, this calls for a mind of wisdom. The seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits. So this woman is a city also, and this city sits on seven hills. There are only two cities uh, that are world-renowned that have that much authority um, because this city, whatever this city is, rules over the kings of the earth. So this city has tremendous authority worldwide. There are only two that, that can be said to, to sit on seven hills. One would be Jerusalem and the other would be Rome. Jerusalem has been hated all through history and although it plays a huge role in, in his historic events and wars and all this, this kind of thing, um, I don't think Jerusalem can ever be said to have uh, authority over many kings around the world. J Jerusalem just doesn't fit. Rome perfectly fits uh, all the description that we are given here of the prostitute. And therefore, uh, we must look at Rome for the answer to who the prostitute is. The Vatican City and the Roman Catholic Church are the perfect fit for the descriptions we are given of the prostitute in Revelation 17. Why does the Roman Catholic Church fit the description in Revelation 17? Uh, let's read what this prostitute is like. Revelation 17:2. With her the kings of the earth committed adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. Revelation 17, 4-6 The woman was dressed in purple and, and scarlet, and was glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hands, filled with the abomination things and the filth of her adulteries. The name written on her forehead was a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes, and the abomination of the earth. I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of God's holy people, the blood of those who bore testimony to Jesus. When I saw her, I was greatly astonished. Here are the descriptions of uh, this prostitute. She is extremely rich. She is filthy. She drinks filthiness. She is extremely influential politically and, and, and powerful. She is the abomination of the earth. That means she sits in God's place. The abomination is an uh, idol that is set up in the temple of God. So she is the abomination of the earth. And she is the greatest persecutor of, of the church. So let's see uh, if the, the Roman Catholic Church fits this description. Is the home Roman Catholic Church wealthy? No one really knows exactly how wealthy they are because uh, every diocese, I think you say, around the world have their own financial entity. But the, the wealth of the Vatican City only, the Vatican only, is estimated at $15 billion. Just to put that in perspective, the wealth of one of the biggest companies in the world, uh, Walmart, is $6.6 .6 billion. The Vatican has its own bank, uh, which with assets of $64 billion, uh, its equity of $764 million, and gold reserves of $20 million. One, one issue that is very damaging to, to the idea of the Pope is the fact that the, some of the popes were so depraved that even people who professed no religion at all were ashamed of them. Historians, even Roman Catholic historians, will even attest to the fact. We don't have to look into the ancient history to find uh, these abuses. Uh, we know very well that the, the child abuse cases coming up against uh, priests all around the world uh, have been the highlights for, for several decades now. Uh, let's see how powerful the Roman Catholic Church is. Vatican City is, is a sovereign state. It's the only city in, in the world that's a sovereign state and recognized by inter international law. The Vatican is the only city church in the world with ambassadors. It has embassies in 88 countries and many of the other countries have ambassadors in Rome. Did the Roman Catholic Church persecute Christians? Well, Again, we don't have to look very far. In the 1200s, Peter Waldo started uh, a movement where he, he started to, to translate the Bible in French, started to read the Bible, and he was persecuted by the church, and, and the, uh, the Waldenses uh, were also persecuted by the Roman Catholic Church. The Spanish Inquisition, uh, where hundreds of thousands of people died in absolutely horrific manners. 
you can look at the, the, the reign of Queen Mary in, in England in the 1500s, the persecution of the Huguenots, the, the day of St. Bartholomew's where they, they massacred Christians in, in, in Paris and all across France. Uh, the list is, is absolutely endless. Like You can read Fox's Book of Martyrs, which, which is an encyclopedia of a lot of what the Roman Catholic Church did. When you take it as a whole, the Roman Catholic Church has killed more Christians than any other organization in this world. So they, they look Christian, and this is what amazed John when he saw it. 